to Moses at the burning bush, burning bush, burning bush. God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, and I am the Lord thy God. So take your shoes off of Moses, your own holy ground, holy ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off. And watching and waiting for you coming back as he left. So, Donovan, how about open us up in a word of prayer? Special blessing on our mother today, being Mother's Day. But, uh, but the Lord knew us before we was ever formed in our mother's womb. And he knew us right on. Uh, of course, when we accept them, our name written down in the land book of life. And so we thank the Lord for that. Got to make just a few short announcements. Uh, no church tonight. Called a Mother's Day. Standard procedure here. So try to spend time with our mother families uh, so no service tonight be back Wednesday night seven and like normally our prayer list and we don't mention on Sunday morning either but being we're not going to have service we want to mention a little bit some of the names that we're going to mention we've already mentioned but they still need our prayers still need prayers Kara Lewis is one down in the hospital she had open heart surgery and then she had two heart attacks so Really need to lift her up. Uh, in, in mankind terms, it looks bad. But we got a God that's able. So continue to lift her up. Brother Paul in Brunswick Hospital. Uh, Glenda Willis went home with a nurse to help her. Danny Batten's home. Brother Bill's still in the hospital. He's better, thank the Lord. 
Was Mike Yon still there far to know in St. Vincent? Uh, Sister Geraldine Rawson, Teresa John's his mother, she's home and better, but she still needs her prayer, along with all these others we mentioned. And uh, Brother Bill Gillis, Karen's husband, Hendricks's husband, they need their prayers. And, uh, you know, when we go looking, we could leave this world at any time, whatever age. But when somebody your age passes, you think about it a little more. So one of my schoolmates died yesterday morning. So, you know, it can happen any time. You go out to the cemetery, small graves, a little bigger graves, and there's grown graves. So it's all in God's hands. So let's continue to worship him and uh, lift him up and let him guide and direct us through this life. But be looking for him. He could come at any time, whether it be in death or breaking the eastern sky open. Later on, Brother Jamie got some presents to give some of you mothers, so be figuring up your age and how many children you got and all that. So, love y'all. Appreciate you. And while we are here, we are blessed by the Lord, His presence, the Holy Spirit within, and the fact that we get to live under His blessings. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praise my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. because we know whom we have believed and know that he is faithful to keep that which we've committed unto him against that day.
big smiles on your faces. Everyone on this side face this way. Everyone on that side face that way. And say, good morning, brother and sister. Glad to see you. Love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. All right, now, this next one, which should not be hard to sing at all. Some of the verses you may not have sung often, but you've known it since you were a kid. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I hope you're not, but a lot of us are stuck at home on the couch because they're not letting us out, except on occasions like this, but Jesus is with us. He is there beside us. He is ever present with us, and we are held in his bonds of amazing grace, so let's sing that last song as we worship him for his grace and mercy.
I close without singing, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, 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 praise God. Well, good morning. It's good to be with you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'll give you a little time to look that up. And uh, we've got some gifts here. Also, uh, you see the little blue buckets there at the back door. I don't know if there's one at that back door. So for you non-waivers, y'all going to have to come through this door. Uh, uh, Pick up uh, one of those gifts that we give the ladies. Uh, but uh, for those that are here, we sure like to uh, share uh, a gift with you. They got my agenda here, so I won't mess up. I only thought there was two gifts there, but there's three. Okay. Mother's Day uh, is a special time for uh, anyone. But we know that without mothers, uh, what kind of home would we have? And uh, so we're so thankful for each one of them. Uh, but today we want to honor the oldest mother here. So, girls, I'm going to give you all a fair chance. If you're 39, raise your hand. Yeah. yeah. A lot of you wanted to, but you didn't, and... In all fairness, yeah, I got you, Miss Zeta. I know better than that. Uh, but anyway, good, good, good that all you feel like 39, raise your hand. How about that? So y'all still telling the truth. That's good. That's good. Okay, so let's start at 75 years old. Anyone older than 75 years old? Wow. Jen? Um, well, we don't have but one. Miss Marilyn Snellgro is at least 75, uh, but she also raised her hand at 39, so I don't really know which one's somewhere in there. Let's give Miss uh, Snellgro a hand. Thank you, Miss Carey. Yeah. All right. The youngest mother here. So all y'all that work 39 which means she was on the bottom scale, gives you a chance right here. Let's start today with anyone 25 or younger who's a mom. Molly? All right. All right, how old are you? 23. Molly, you're just old. Sorry, just old. Man, twice as old as both of them. That's bad. <laughs> Anyway, all right, and there's, there's the reason why she's a mom, that little fella right there with him. Let's give her a hand this morning. Amen. That's all right, buddy. Give her, yes, yeah, sir. Give mama a hand. Yes, yeah, sir. Now, the mom here with the most children present. The mom here with the most children present. Now, there's one person, particularly one family here that's cheated, they done two at the time. So I don't know if we count that as one or two, but we'll go with two. All right. Anyway, so if you have two or more kids, raise your hand. Anybody else? All right, you got two or more. Three or more. Three or more. Cynthia. Four. Anybody got four or more? 
Well, they kind of quiet when you're waving, but now they start giving out gifts, they start getting excited over there. Okay, all right. Maybe I didn't look at it. Cynthia Sandiago, she needs a big hand over there. Three girls, one boy, two in college, two of them hoping to get out of home soon. So, I mean, that's just awesome, isn't it? But thank you very much. Look at it. He's ready to go. Yeah. All right. But it is good to be with you. Uh, if, uh, if you still have your mom and she's not with you today, uh, give her a call. Talk to mine early this morning. Of course, she is on her way down to Jacksonville pretty soon to go stay with my dad. And uh, they're listening this morning. Uh, so I'm going to tell her I love her uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, enjoy him while you got him. Mom, you have a tremendous responsibility. Tremendous responsibility. So if you found 1 Samuel chapter 1, we're going to talk about a lady named Hannah this morning. It's, it's kind of lengthy, uh, so I'm not going to read as many scriptures. Uh, I'll just maybe uh, just go into it kind of message style. But if you would stand with me, we're going to read several scriptures right off the bat to get uh, some of the reading out of the way this morning. I want you to know this. A good mama is a praying woman. A good mama. If you want to be a good mama, you need to be a praying woman. Not just when the baby's sick. Not when just things ain't going good between you and the hubby. But at all times. I thought about that song. If you mamas would learn every one of those Jesus loves me verses by heart, that would be a test right there. How many have used that very, ver- that very song to rock, one at sli- walk, rock a baby to sleep? And y'all sung the first verse over and over and over again, right? So you got a challenge. There's more verses than one. Look with me as we look in God's Word. It says, Now there was a certain man, Arathema Ima Zophram, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Joham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephrite. And it says in verse 2, and he had two wives, bless his heart. The name of the one wife was Hannah. The other name of the other one was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. There's the problem. I'll explain in just a moment. It says, And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts of Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the, pri- the priest of the Lord, was there. Uh, the, the significance of that, we remember those two guys got kind of sideways in their walk with God at one point there. But Eli's uh, two sons was there. It says, And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all the sons and her daughters portions. But Hannah, uh, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary, Penina, also provoked her sore. For to her, for, to make her fret, because the Lord has shut up her womb. And he said so, he, and he did so year by year. And when she went up to the house of the Lord so per, to provoke her, therefore she wept and did, did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, uh, said to her, He says, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? Why is thy heart grieved? Am, am not I better to thee than, than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul. Father, this morning, God, we pray for all mothers, God. We, we, we pray, Lord, that they would uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and have that loving kindness that each one should have, God. And I know there's several that does. God, help us, Lord, to be what we need to be. Bless the reading of your word this morning. Continue to bless those, Father, the, uh, the ones that's been on our prayer list, God. Bo, go with us now as we stand here. Give us a blessed day today. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Maybe the world heard y'all say amen. All right. Here's the story. Uh, some men uh, even think the reason why that Elkanah may have had uh, more than one wife. It was... So important in those days that uh, when a man, especially uh, uh, in the Israeli people, uh, that we know more about them, we do the others, that their wives would bear them many children and would bear them a man-child. 
You know, it was so important to carry on that name. Well, Elkanah is out of the tribe of Levi, which means he is in the, the priestly side of, uh, of God's 12 different tribes. So most of them would be church workers or something. And he wanted one uh, himself that would carry on his name. But uh, some think because that uh, Hannah uh, did not, could not have children that he took on the second wife. And we find out that she was pretty fruitful. She had uh, daughters and sons unto him. But we do notice in the story there that Hannah was his first love. And all right, you know, we're, we'll speak on polygamy just a moment. Uh, it's not that God was happy with that decision. Actually, it looks like from our side of it that he had a lot of lack of faith. His desires to have children to carry on his name was more important than doing what God would have him do. And I know it happened a lot in the Word of God, but nowhere can you find where God said that was okay. That one, it's nowhere in the Word of God that, you know, take on many wives. You know, Solomon had many. He just married into different nationalities and everything all in the Word of God. But we, we see that this happened, and, and immediately we find out there's trouble in that. But let me tell you guys, there can't be but one woman in the house. And sometimes when she's ill, there can't be nobody but her in the house. It's best to go on and mow the grass and get out of the house. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you're married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Go fishing, get out of the house, because that place is hers. I'd say this about the mom. It's dad's responsibility to provide for those, and I know in today's time, moms help do all that, but it don't matter, guys. That outside that house belongs to you. That inside that house belongs to her, and when you take your shoes off and she cleans up for you and all like that, just respect what she's doing for you inside and be thankful. I was thinking this morning, my wife does a lot of stuff for us and uh, about everything for me. Uh, she never fails, hardly ever, to not lay out my, my clothes for me, uh, whether it be work day. You say, really? Really? Uh, don't say nothing, girls, to her about that. I'm really enjoying that, and I pray that she'll do it from now on. And, uh, uh, but my clothes get washed, and, uh, you know, we share cooking details, but she does most of it. Uh, we don't share cleanup details. That's mostly her. I'm just being honest. And we miss those things. But there's one woman. She does it the way she wants to and don't do it no other way. Her way is the only way. And, I, hey, I'm good with that. I think that's godly that it's her house and what God has given her, she's going to keep that for the glory of God. So I always admire people that come in and other women that come in that want to go in the kitchen. You can hear them talking about, now, I'll be wanting to help you. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you know, that, that's just being nice. They go in there and help each other uh, do their things. But I guarantee you they don't do some of the same things the same way. But it's her house. So in this house, there was two women. And we know that every year when they would go up for sacrifice, that Elkanah would give uh, Penina and all her children, he would give them a portion. You know, it only says a, a portion. And, and then the Bible says that, that he would show favor to Hannah. Hannah he loved. I, you know, that was his first. And, and, and I, I still believe in even the wrong he did. He showed special things. And the Bible says that he gave her a worthy portion, which matter he doubled up on her portion as though she had a child. He gave her a worthy portion, not leaving her out. It's not that he, did, he fell out of love with her, uh, it, but the things of the world kind of drove him to have to get another wife and have somebody to carry on that name. And you can find out later after she has this baby, you know, that Penina's children uh, still receive blessings, but they of the lesser blessings. So it, who, what was the will of God? The will of God uh, was for her to have, this, have a child. Uh, but a praying mama, uh, this thing bothered her. Uh, if, if, if it was all of God, why did this secondary woman uh, always provoke her? Could you imagine her getting all of her children and just prancing around in front of her? Oh, yes, you the chosen one, but you can't have any children. Let me tell you, people, it happens. You all know it happens. This parade around ain't got to say a word, you know, to show what you got versus what they ain't got. And that's kind of what we said. He, the Bible says that she provoked her every time of sacrifice, every time. And it, you know that maybe Hannah dreaded every year that it was time to go up and after, offer sacrifices and, and go uh, do the things for the Lord and, and go see Eli and go to the temple and do all. Don't you know she dreaded that every year because she always got that from, 
from her wife-in-law. Was that, was that right? Wife-in-law. It got that from her. And the Bible says she would weep sorely. She was upset very bad. And we know that uh, this one particular time here that uh, they was fixing to go, they eat supper or eat dinner, breakfast, whatever. They had eaten and uh, she was just constantly crying the whole time. Well, uh, I, I want you, I'll go ahead and say this about her. I don't think so much that she was... Uh, wanting Elkanah to have a child as she was wanting to give one to God. Now, I'll share the reason why in just a moment. But when we, when we look in God's Word, she ripped and she did not eat. She did not eat. Now, guys, after you've been married a while and your wife don't eat, you know there's something wrong. When you first married them, they wouldn't hardly eat nothing. And then the longer you get married to them, they'll eat everything. Boy, some of you guys ain't got no backbone whatsoever. They girls like to eat. Them girls can swaff it down, boy, I'm telling you. But she did not eat. So her husband asked her, he says, why are you this way? As though he didn't know. As though he couldn't figure out. After time after time, she was lowly of heart. They was going to sacrifice. Give it all. He says, hadn't I been better to you than ten sons? Well, yes, he's been good to her, but she was burdened in her heart. But here's what happens. You know, it don't speak that she'd ever done this before. This may be the first time she ever actually put this to, to the test. But we find out, and we'll read a little bit more, that Hannah, after she'd done the dishes and they started to go up to Shiloh, so Hannah went up after, in verse 9, had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon the, uh, the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Now, this was not a, a normal type of something that would happen for a woman to come do what she does. The scriptures tell us that she was carrying on in such a way and she was praying out loud. I find a woman who was not ashamed to call upon her Lord. I find a humble woman that went there with uh, the, the weight of, 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 of Panina stuff and, and uh, not doing, uh, having a child for a husband, but also not having a child to carry on the lineage of what these, uh, they were Nazarites uh, and the Levites. It, it was um, not to be able to carry that on as she was burdened down in heart because that she wasn't able to produce. Here she begins to pray. She prays aloud enough. She cries hard enough that Eli, the priest, um, uh, he recognized that, and then he talks to her about the reasons why she's doing that. And uh, she don't have any child. And, and, of course, we know that story. And, uh, and he says, okay, well, that's fine. And she just continues on. And she's wailing. She's crying. Uh, uh, just yeah. let me tell you, when, when, when you know... I'll say this later, but anyway. When a woman gets to weeping and a wailing and a crying like that, son, I mean, a panther cannot even get close to the squeals that you can hear. This woman was sincere in heart. She was broken. She was crying out. Finally, Eli, the Bible says that he went over there and he marked her mouth. He marked her mouth. Now, I don't really know what marked her mouth is. I don't know if he put his hand over his mouth or, or whatever. You know, when, in times in the Bible when God marked uh, somebody's mouth, they couldn't speak. But I'm going to read what happened there. And it says, and in verse 14, it says, And Eli said unto her, he says, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away the wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Uh, cannot thine handmaiden for a daughter, don't, it says, Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hereunto. He, he covered her mouth, and, and, and he, when, when he closed her mouth and marked her mouth, he asked her this question, that which means she has to speak again. So she tells him her petitions, and uh, he says, Don't think of me that way. I'm not, I'm not drunk. You know, if we would actually worship God in the way that the Spirit would probably be want us to, there was some people looking through those windows that them folks is drunk. Uh, when we get to heaven, you're going to find out them people are, you know, happy. You know, that's, that's the word, happy. Happy in the spirit. Well, if the spirit's on you, you ought to be happy. You know, I just can't see somebody in the spirit just sitting there going, 
Yeah, it, when the Spirit gets a hold of me, man, I, I got to move a little bit. You know, or I got to say something, or I got to cry, or I got to move. And, 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 and she was wanting the Spirit of God to move on her, and, and she was sad, and she wanted that happiness. You know, uh, when your heart's broken, uh, you just want a little bit of sunlight to shine in on her darkness. And uh, she tells him. And notice how immediately, listen, if you don't ask of nothing, you will get nothing. And here's what she's going to say. Listen there. And after she spoke her piece, and he understood what happened. No, notice what the man of God said to her. And Eli answered and said, he says, Go in peace and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Wow. The answer of prayer. It's not the way we do it now, but that's the way they done it then. Eli, uh, he got a nudge from God because he don't have that power within him. He was the priest. He could speak on uh, God's behalf only when God ministers unto him and God spoke to him. Not... Uh, not that that woman was praying to him, but God was, she was praying unto the Lord, as she mentioned several times here, and God heard her prayers, not the priest of Eli. Do you understand? She was to the point that she was broken, uh, she was sincere, and God heard her prayers. And then Eli says, okay, I've heard from God. I'll just put it that way. Eli heard from God. He don't, he don't possess those powers. You know, I don't care what kind of coat, jacket, pin you put on in you. If you have those powers, it's given of God. It's not nothing of yourself. And here he says, go on home. Everything's going to be all right. Now, a praying woman, notice what happens. Well, she didn't question him. Well, how long will it take? You know, that's what we want to know every time something goes wrong. Well, how long am I going to be like this? Or how long is it going to take before I can see? How long is this? How about, you know, none of them questions. The Bible says in verse 18, and she says, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and there her countenance was so no more sad. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she prayed. She hadn't had a relationship with her husband but she's already acting like the prayer's been answered. Amen. Do you get what she's doing here? Give it to God, let him have it, and go on about your merry way. Go on and act like God is going to answer your prayers. When we start doubting that, God may not answer our prayers. She prayed, and Eli got a nudge from God and said, You're going, this is going to be granted, you don't do that. What's the first thing she went and done? I told you these girls could eat. She went and got her something to eat. And her countenance after that, she was no more sad. God had spoke to her. Listen, God's promises. As Christians, we need to be happy as she was. Go on in a, in a happy, merry way. God's going to stand true to his promises. Even through all the sickness and stuff that's been going on, God's going to stand true to his promises. As we look uh, further and God's word here in verse 19, it says, And there rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to uh, Ramah. And Elkanah knew his wife and, uh, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about Hannah had conceived uh, that she bear a son and called the name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Now, I want to give you a little rundown about Samuel, just a little short, quick Samuel. This was just not another child. Have you noticed in the Bible there was more cases just like this, you know? You remember Abraham, Sarah. Y'all know the story, and even in their sons' lives and, and all the things like that. But when, when, when prayer was much at want and, 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 and things was happening, that God moved him. When he moved him... He, he moved in a miraculous way. Listen, when we have to wait on the Lord, don't wait for just a little firecracker sound when God answers. Wait for the big boom. Don't wait for just a little snap, crackle, and pop. You brace yourself for an earthquake because when God speaks in a mighty way, there's some good going to come out of it. This Samuel, even in the scriptures, we, we find out in, in one particular scripture there, and I can't recite it verbatim, but even it says that when, when, when God was, they was trying to persuade God to change his mind about things, here's what God said. He says, even if Moses and Samuel were to ask me, I would not change my mind. Does that not put you back up to snuff about what he thought of Samuel? What Samuel become? That he was uh, on the level of Moses? Now, how high was Moses? Now, we know he wasn't to the level uh, where Abraham was at, but we do know that that's, pretty, that's speaking pretty highly of him. 
I mean, that's speaking pretty highly uh, whatsoever uh, of this man. So Samuel, and she named him that because she'd gotten him from the Lord. She didn't get him from her husband. She got him from the Lord. But her promise was that she would dedicate him unto the Lord. She would dedicate this child to the Lord. A praying woman, God honored and, pro- and, and answered the promises that, uh, uh, that he said he would do. He did it in a miraculous way. This same. Not only that, I'll go and tell you this. She wound up with seven kids. She wound up with seven kids. Right on up to a ripe old age. She had six uh, before, uh, after the fact uh, of Samuel. I mean, that's, that's just, just astonishing how God... But it wasn't in God's time. It wasn't in God's time, but she knew it. Let me tell you what else she done. The Bible says that uh, the next year, see, she, she got pregnant right after they had come back uh, from uh, doing the sacrifices and, and uh, going up to the sea. So when she come back, she got pregnant. So nine months later, so uh, Samuel was a little fella. He was a little fella. And uh, Elkanah and Penan and all them was going back up there to do sacrifices the next year, and uh, she refused to go. Well, it didn't sound like... Uh, you know, like she had turned her back on God or anything like that. But here's what she, here's her plan. She said, I promise to give him to the Lord. And when I wean him, I will carry him and I'll give him to the Lord. When I carry him back, when I carry him for his first time, he's going to stay. Did you hear me? He's going to stay. Man, the love of a mama that could do that. Lord, if you give me a child, I'll give him to you. Listen, mamas, that's the plan. If you have a child, give him to the Lord. Give her to the Lord. If you give them to the Lord, raise them in a, in a way that they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. Raise them in that love and admonition of the Lord. Do your part. I can tell you, mamas uh, have a special uh, deal. It, it, you know, mama can get by with saying stuff. Ain't it right? Your mama can get on to you and call you out on some stuff. If your daddy did, you get old enough, you about want to fight. Mama can do that, and she can get by with it. Mama can keep complaining to you about a mole on your back till you go get it checked out. When you would tell everybody else, would you just leave me alone? Mama can get by with telling you uh, you're fat. Mama can get by with telling you how much she loves you, and she, pri- and she cries, and she, and she does all that. You know why mama can get by with that? She's demonstrated it all of her life. When, when the dad was in the bed and the children cried, you know, there was four in my house at one time, four kids in, in my mom and dad's house at one time. My, we could make a noise, not cry out or not anything like that. And daddy said, who was that? My mama could tell him. We wasn't in the same room either. Mama knew because mama had been there. Mama has that right. Mama can do those things. She was mur- nurse. She was cook. She was cleaner. She was a doctor. She was everything. Even when Caleb and them was called, all the grandchildren, we, t- we, we had a ball the other day about this, talking about mama. Uh, uh, some, uh, Caleb had stepped on a nail the other day, me and him, and, and, uh, and he wasn't going to bring it up around mama because if he did, granny always doctors everybody. Now, he wouldn't let his mama doctor him. But for some reason, Granny had to say so. She was the doctor. Yeah. And he, she, he told her, he says, Granny, I'm grown. I am not pulling my boot off for you to pour that camp folk for Nick on my toe. That's just not happening. But up to then, everybody that got hurt outside went in to see Mama or Granny. How many of you have doctored them? How many of you waited on me? Let me tell you, when you show that love and care, it shows what kind of mama you are. But I can tell you this, if your kids can catch you praying and seeking God's face, it leaves just as much or even a more imprint on your children. And mamas do that. Mamas is some of the first ones that tell you after you're grown and gone that she loves you. That she loves you. Mama continues to kiss you even when you're grown and gone. Mama continues to kiss you. To demonstrate that love. Hannah here, she wanted to wait to that time. And the Bible tells us at that time when he was weaned that she carried him back to Eli and gave him to the Lord. You gave me him, I'm carrying him back. I'll carry him back. And delivered him. Now, she got to go visit. There's probably many times she went up there just to visit him. But he was given unto the Lord. She said, I won't let a razor come upon his head. I won't do any of those things. He will be raised. He will be a priest. He will be uh, yours, God. And look what God done with him. 
Mamas, that's a pretty big uh, impression that she made. Look what God will do with our children if mamas will do what they're supposed to do. And no, I mean, it's Mama's Day. Daddy's used the same way. But I can just tell you, when Mama does what she's supposed to do and instill the love that she has and the love that she has for God in her children, even when things got tight, this woman says, if you just give me one, I'll give him to you. Well, let me tell you, that should be what we're all doing. They're not ours. Don't you know that even conception is a miracle within itself? No man can duplicate what God has done. They cannot create life in that form or fashion. Uh, they, you know, they've done some things where they've mimicked what God has done, but they can't take nothing and make something. They can't, but God did. He made Adam out of nothing. and took a little dirt and blew in his nose, and he became a living soul. And he gave us a, a helpmeet in this woman. So the story is she leaves him. But now, there's a prayer there, and this was kind of after the fact. It just happens to be in the next verse, I mean the next chapter. I want to share this prayer with you. Now, this is a mama's prayer. She's done had six more kids since this. She's not regretted anything that has happened to Samuel. But listen to what a praying woman, the first prayer we heard, she had a request. She had a petition. She prayed before the Lord. And here's something we don't none need to forget. When we ask of God and he delivers, we also need to give a prayer of thanksgiving. She gave a, per, a, a, a petition. She gave her request was made known unto God. And God answered that. Now, this is years later. Don't you look with me in chapter 2, verse 1. I'll read this. We're getting close to quitting. And Hannah prayed. Now, we can just turn the book back just a minute and find out where Hannah prayed. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. It's a different woman. My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. What does that mean? Every child, even with Samuel on, all the other six children, she praised God for it. Listen, children are not ours. They belong to the Lord. Here he says, my horn, her mouthpiece, exalt the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Not goody, 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 look what the Lord's done for me. He, she says, look what the Lord has blessed me with. She did not retaliate according to this to a woman that I bet you, um, me and my wife was watching a, we got a little device, Roku. We just got it. Ruku. Anyway, probably Japanese made. But anyway, we got this thing. We can't figure out how to go on there. But we did find and find this little Christian movie. And uh, there was a woman standing up giving her testimony at the end of the thing. And uh, she was telling about and just tears about what she'd done. Her child was healed by God and all that stuff right there. And some woman said something real negative in the back. And there was this woman, maybe think of some woman from Hickok. She jumped up. She said, no, you didn't just say that. Because she was feeling the tears of that, one, that mama. And, you know, and she couldn't stand it. You know, I, think, I think these girls get together on sometimes, guys. I think they had that same feeling. And she was talking about how God had healed her child. And, and then what the woman had said in the back here, y'all made this up from the get-go. And son, I thought that blonde-headed woman was fitting to go back there and fight right there in the church. And they was in church. A throw down. But here, here we see that Hannah's praying and she's giving thanks unto the Lord. She's pouring her heart out just as though she was asking something. She's trying not to leave anything else. She says, there is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our Lord. He says, talk no more so exceedingly proudly. You know, I believe she was actually doing a little bit of preaching here in her prayer. If you let you know, if someone could hear, especially Panina, about her proud self, uh, she says, "Talk no more pride." I believe that this was the most sincere, innocent woman. Now, I believe if you was wrong, she'd call you out. I think of her. I think of Miss Frances Batten, sweetest lady I know. But if you asked her something she didn't agree with, it, she'd tell you she didn't agree with it. One of the sweetest ladies I know. One of the godless ladies I know. You know, and I just think nothing could hurt me that ever come out of her mouth. But she would stand for the truth, and I thank God for that. That's why I think she's a special lady in my eyes. This is a special lady. And, and, and uh, no more talk exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Boy, could we work on that these days. 
Boy, what I, look what I have done. Ain't nothing you have done. God's give you everything. You can't be arrogant about nothing. He says, for the Lord is, is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. You know what she's saying? Don't be proud, but if you are, here's what happened. Your actions are weighed by the Lord. What it means? Your actions are judged by the Lord. Be careful. I don't think this was a bad way. You know, sometimes preachers seem like always getting on somebody. No, I'm giving information out to, to help you not to fall into these temptations and struggles. That's what she was saying here. And she says, the bows of the mighty man are broken. Uh, she says, they have stumbled and are girded with strength. He says, that, that they that are full of high have hired out themselves uh, for bread. He says, and they were hungry, the hunger ceased. He says, so that the barren have, have borne seven, just talking about herself, and she have had many children and wax feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and rich, and he bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the, the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them uh, among princesses and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he that set the world upon them. Him. Notice verse 9. I swear I was really trying to hurry to get to. He will keep the feet of his saints. She says, I'm telling you all this. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I'm an old woman now. I've had seven kids. Trust in the Lord. And he will set the feet and keep the feet of the saints. If I only see one thing that this woman was prideful in, that she boasted on, it was being a saint of God. And boy, that's something to be proud of. He keeps the feet of the saints. And the wicked shall be silent in the darkness, for by the strength shall no man prevail. I think looking back, what kept Penina's mouth closed after Samuel got here? It was the miracle of God, and God says, I will silence it. It will be in the darkness, and they will not prevail against you. And now she's thanking him. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of heaven, shall be uh, thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and, and he shall give strength unto his kings and exalt the horn of the anointed. And it says, And Elkanah went to Rahama to his house. And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. How long did he did it? He did it till he, he was the head guy over Israel. Y'all remember the stories of Samuel? And, uh, you know, we had Samuel, then, then you had this man named Saul that come along and all those things. And when he didn't do the things, one of the things that stood out to me, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you, Samuel was not a perfect man, but he was a godly man, likening to that of Moses according to the scriptures. But I remember when, when Saul brought back King Agag and, and they were supposed to utterly destroy them. The ultimate result of what Samuel, this was the, 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 the child in which Elkanah and uh, Sarah, uh, Hannah had. Here's the child. This is the rewards of uh, raising him in the church. He, he went outside there and to, to do what Saul uh, did not do. The Bible says that he, now he was old. And he took a, a sword and he cut this man to pieces because he did not want to dishonor God. He was a godly man. And I believe he was a godly man because he had a godly mama. And mama did what she was supposed to do. And Samuel did what he was supposed to do. And God used him even though there was a long period of wait. But when God showed up, he showed out. She gave him man to apple of her eye, first conception son, and he's going to lead God's people. All because mama was faithful. Mama loved God. Mama wasn't afraid to go to the throne of grace. And she says, God, there's nothing too big for you. And if you'll do this for me as your mate, handmaid, I will turn again and give my fruits of my womb to you. <laughs> what a wonderful lady. That was her prayer. She exalted the Lord. In times of trouble, ladies, let's don't fight back. Let's just praise. Let's just give glory. Have, have the answers, but let them come from God. Be slow to speak and slow to anger, but quick to pray and quick to praise. I know a lot of people probably went to Proverbs 31 for a Mother's Day gift. But when I was thinking about a message, I thought about 
Hannah, she, she came to me, kind of singled her out, that she would love to do two or three things, have a child for her husband, have some fruit from her own womb, but greatest thing of all, if, she, if he would make this possible, that she would have a kid that would make a difference. She raised him as such. She didn't quit raising Samuel. Although he stayed in the house, he worked in the house of God. He learned what it was like under Eli what to do. And Mama still visited him and encouraged him. Never threatened not once to take him back. Her love for God was even stronger than her love for her own child as she gave him to him. Sometimes Mama has love like we don't know. Mama's love, I say this, we're going to close. Brother Scott, come on up. The only thing likening to God's love, the Bible scriptures tell us it's the, the love that a mama has. Because we can't understand why. You can have a child that is wayward. They can have a child, your dad would disown them, this and that, but mama still loves them. Mama remembers the very moment she felt that first kick. Mama remembers the moment there, in the, in, whether you, the man was in there or not, she remembers what it was like to go in there and see that baby for the first time. She knows what it was like to go home and change that first diaper and nurse that child. The first time he got sick, the first time of this, then along came graduation and then come a marriage and then come this and it come that. You know what? And there was a lot of bumpy roads in between there, but Mama still loved. Mama's got to say so. Thank you, girls. God didn't build us that way. Cleave to that which God built you that way for. Don't let no one try to take that away from you. Because the love that you can give is the closest thing that we have to God's love. And I'm going to tell you as a man, I need it. Not only that, I want it. Thank God that he made us a helpmate. Thank God for mamas to stand together. Father, we thank you. God, this lady demonstrated what it's like to love you, even more so than loving her only child at that time. God, I pray that we would look and see how, how hard we love you, how much we love you, the more you give back. There's no end to what you can do. And God, our testimony would be like Hannah's prayer. There's none like you. There's none higher than you. There's no one can oppose you. You set the feet of your saints. You keep those things. God, we thank you for that. God bless all the mamas today. There's a lot of people going to see their mama today, but God, I pray that they not forget to show her and tell her how much they love you and in that order how much she's done for them. They'll never know everything she's done, but she's done enough. Thank you for our our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, who came and died for us, who loved us even more than a mother could. He gave himself for us. As mamas give her themselves for their children, Jesus Christ gave himself for a world that was lost. God, I pray today that we would grab a hold of that. We would understand that because without him we're nothing. But with him we're everything. Help us lead to that today, Father. Again, bless as only you can in Jesus' name. Amen.
y'all got a big meal planned today. Anybody in here having biscuits? <laughs> I wasn't going to invite myself or anything. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you don't have your mother, then find a mother and give her a hug. How about it? And if you're afraid to hug them, you give them one of them air hugs. Like that. Yes, sir. Hmm? Absolutely. That's been proven so many times. Not only can y'all rear children, but there's a lot of times if it weren't for you girls, as a many a church be closed. Because y'all are faithful. And we thank you. We thank you. I'm going to ask Brother Donnie May to dismiss us today. Thank you.